Brethren, praise the Lord. We thank God for another opportunity. And we are here to give him thanks and praise. Our series, Finding God, and which we ever do for the glory of God. So let us dive ourselves into the word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you that every opportunity that will give us to interact with your word, to find you because you are life. And we pray the Lord you bless us in this season, in this time that we are interacting with your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God that every moment we interact with his word, it's life. And in this episode, finding God, it is something that we shall keep doing. And of course, we do it all the time because our God is our life. And so in finding God, it is at the center of our being. And so we do this because we must acknowledge God's presence. And the moment we acknowledge God's presence, we go in seeking, finding him. And when we find him, it is life. When we find him, it is joy. And when we find him, it is eternity. Because life on earth ends, but then when it ends here, we find life in eternity. And so we follow him. And so we seek him. And so all is done for our spiritual growth. And this is something that I have ever, 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 ever enjoyed doing in my life because God desires souls that seek him and find him. And so I just want to connect something here very, very briefly from Jeremiah chapter 29. Because we are doing Finding God, and I will just mention one other biblical figure after that. And then we shall find that actually we shall continually do it because the biblical figures that we have been looking at and those that we shall continue looking at are giving us an example of how to do it and how we can live to please the Lord. And so in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse we shall begin from verse 11, which is a very common verse. And very many people read it over and over. But we shall read about four of them, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And the word of God says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not the for evil, not plans to give you a future and a hope. Now, verse 12, the Bible says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. And this is important for me. And verse 13, he says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Can you imagine? This is where the center is, you will seek me and you will find me. And in verse 14 of Jeremiah 29, the Bible says that I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Brethren, I pray the Lord for this portion of scripture like this. And especially when we are dealing with episodes, finding God. And here in Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, You will seek me and you will find me. And so it is an ideal thing for me that actually as we talk about the biblical figures, now here Jeremiah has a point to make. And now we are looking at other biblical figures that we have already looked at and these that we are coming in. And the example that I want to give about this same portion of scripture is there is a certain gentleman that we have talked about many, many times. I have talked about him many times and you have talked about him many, many times, but he's a biblical figure. And this gentleman is called Jabez. Now, when you look at Jabez and connecting with what Jeremiah has just been saying, it is something that actually you and I can pick lessons from and we live our life that actually our past cannot determine our future. And now the man Jabez is another biblical figure 
that actually comes as our example that actually Jeremiah is talking about here, seek me and I will find me and you find me and I will restore your fortunes. Now this man, Jabez, has a story to tell. And about Jabez, we find him in First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And these first chapters of Chronicles 1, 2, 3 and 4 up to 9, they give us the genealogies. A genealogy is a lineage of the ancestors. So they keep talking about the ancestors of the people of Israel, from Adam actually, and then they keep enumerating the tribes, the clans, the families. And so they talk about Jabez as one of those that was a, an honorable leader of a family. And so about him, why he is singled out and connecting with what I've just been reading from Jeremiah 29, 11 up to 14. The man had a history, the man had a past, but God says, I'll restore your future. And in fact, when you seek me, you'll find me. And so Jabez in the second chronic, in first chronicles, chapter four, verses eight and nine. And so the Bible says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called him, gave him his name, Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And therefore, Jabez had a history. And when God says, I'll restore your fortunes, this falls in line very clearly. And chapter, verse 10, the Bible says, Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. God granted what he asked for. So friends, in this entire episode of this time, I just come to share with you that God sought can be found. That God can change your fortunes. I'm addressing a generation of people that are withheld by their past. The past withholds you, holds you. Your birth circumstances hold you down. Your, you know, your area, I mean, where you are born, circumstances hold you down. Now, Jabez addresses this very, very, very well. And, of course, they are talking about Jabez as the head of his family and the best known for the honorable character. But his name was his undoing. Because the Bible said that his mother gave him this name because of the circumstances surrounding his birth. So here we see the man getting out of his cocoon, getting out, actually trying his best. And I don't remember of the family, a leader at that. So we learn, friends, that calling upon God, trusting God, there's something that God can and do. But also there's something that God can do for our own good. So this Jabez, friends, connecting with the other, the other verses that I read from Jeremiah 29, he is an inspiration and is a challenge to us, you and I, in our times. Jabez used his prayer to help him and helping him to accomplish God's promises. So I meet you with these simple words from this, about this man, Jabez, and connecting with the Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14, that your destination is not stagnant. It can be transformed. So the importance of Jabez's prayer is to you, is for you, is to me, and is for me. We serve one God. He's the same God. Served then is the same God today. And he said the same God in time to come. And so this same God should be and must be the center of our work. Take him to be the center of your work, of your life, because he's a source of blessings. Who doesn't want blessings? We have talked about blessings left, right. And this is a point to make. And so he is one God. That's the point I'm making. And he's the center of, we should make him the center of our work. 
that in everything that you do, that in everything that I do, success to come, success to be ours, God must be at the center. So friends, Jabez knew the secret. Honorable member of the family, but he knew where his success would be. The reason why he said, oh, that you would expand my territory, oh, that, that I may not feel, that I may not encounter harm, because it will give me, it will bring me pain. And so it should be our prayer that every day that you wake up in the morning, every day that you go to sleep, this is the point. For in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, is one of my favorites, that commit your works to the Lord. And thy thoughts shall be established. We make plans. We sit down and draw programs. A day's program, a week's program, a month's program, a year program. But he says commit your works to the Lord. And so friends, this is, for me, it is an important thing. To commit our works, to commit our thoughts, to commit our programs to God. Jabez did and God answered his prayer. Point number two is stay close. We said one God and stay close. Number two is stay close to God, find him, and stay close to him. You know, we are doing finding God. Yes, you may find him and then don't stay close to him. You are keeping yourself away from him, although you declare me that you found him. And so we are urging ourselves that we stay close to God, finding him and staying close to him, relying on him every day, continuously. Week in, week out, day in, day out, year in, year out, month in, month out. Stay close. Stay close to God in your works, in your work, at your family level, at everywhere that you go. Now, I have also discovered, friends, that God, number three, God approves our faithfulness in prayer. And... Faithful in prayer and grants the deserve our heart. We keep reading Philippians 4, where the Bible says that do not be anxious about anything. It should be for uh, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplications, let your desires be made known unto God. And so this is in faithful in prayer. And may God who start this good work like he did for Jabez, do for you. Like he spoke through Jeremiah. Chapter 29, verses 11 to 14. May he restore your fortunes, may he do the same. And I discover from this, one of the points that I discovered is that God desires to hear that we need him at all costs. When I wake up in the morning, he desires that I depend on him at all costs. When I go to sleep, I cover myself. He desires that, you know, that I depend on him at all costs. Jacob knew the secret when he was moving and he found a place, laid down. He picked a stone, put it down as his pillow and he depended on God. He left everything to God. And the Bible said that night angels, you know, we have talked about him severally, Jacob, that he saw a ladder come from heaven and angels coming back, coming up and coming down. And so it pleases God. He desires to hear, to know that we need him at all costs, that you need him, that I need him. And so I pray that actually we make a passionate prayer, being passionate, and he will change our destiny. There's a song that we sing all over, that God is our destiny changer. He deals with our past situations. We are in struggles of life like Jabez was. And so, friends, in this episode of so Finding God, for me, I just feel energized and encouraged to continue diving into the Word of God. These biblical figures, we talk about them, and they were human beings like us. Like us. I've said that over and over again, but there is a way they aligned themselves. But of course, okay, we have also have some bad examples that we have in the Bible, like Cain, like Jabez, I mean, uh, Jezebel, and others. But these that actually encourage us to do good. We need to follow that. So in our struggles in life, we need to remain faithful in caring for uh, God is God remains faithful in caring for those that seek him. And so we also need to remain faithful in seeking him, seeking him and find him. So constantly and passionately, constantly and passionately, 
constantly and passionately, every day, every moment, every minute, every second. The moment, I mean, just say, God, here I am. And God answers prayer, and um, he can change your destiny. So those that have been tied to their past, God can change you. God can release you. God can restore you. He restored for Jabez, his name meaning sorrow. God changed him. And may he change your destiny. May he stand for you. May he stand with you. May he grant you the desire of your heart. I pray that God listens to our prayer and he does something that he did for Jabez. He does, he does it for us. Like he speaks in Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14, he restores our fortunes. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stay blessed in Jesus' name.